Hey guys, welcome back to Reading Your Bible in a Year. My name's Logan, and this year I'm reading my entire Bible with you in hopes that we can grow in our love of Christ together. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the story that we find in 2 Samuel 10, where David is attacked when he's trying to be friends. And I wanted to use this to kind of talk about the concept of self-defense when we have this regards, self-defense in regards to walking out a Christian life. For example, I find that oftentimes people will quote verses like turn the other cheek, like if someone hits you, turn the other cheek. If they steal from you, give them your they steal from your jacket, give them your coat too. They steal your shirt, give them your coat too. Just all these verses that Jesus talks about how about making peace and turning the other cheek. But then throughout the Old Testament, we see these times where God encourages his men to attack. So how do we balance these two ideas? I want to look at this chapter of scripture, kind of walk through what happened, and then give my thoughts on how we actually balance self-defense as being a Christian. So what's happening here? We have King David and someone that was he was friends with died. And so he said this in verse 2, I'm going to show loyalty to Hunan, just as his father Nahan, who was also loyal to me. So David sent ambassadors to express sympathy about his father's death. So his friend, he died, he sends ambassadors to his son. But his, but that son, the new king, treated them very poorly. He shaved half their beard. He cut off the back of their robe to expose their butt. Just really disgracefully kind of humiliated them. So what does this do? This naturally makes David upset. But when this king hears that David was upset, what does he do? He goes out and builds an army. He gathers an army, and then he attacks David. So what's happened in this story? David, he tried to be friends. He tried to show his loyalty and his friendship. But how was that rewarded? That was rewarded with evilness. And the sad part of this world that we live in is that some people, no matter what we do, are going to respond to us in evil. Even though David acted as a righteous man, he was responded to with evilness. A common example I could give you would be someone that's drunk and noticeably drunk. This happened to me a lot on mission trips when people have come up to me that are noticeably drunk. And what someone told me that was probably the best advice I've been given on this topic was don't poke the bear. When you go in to national parks in the States, we have these signs, don't feed the bears, don't feed the wildlife. And this is basically saying that even though you might be trying to do something nice for them, that's not going to help you. If you feed a bear, it will actually attack you, even though you're trying to be kind to it. And with some people, like this man who was just hot-headed, tempered, wicked, and other example would be someone that's drunk. And not all people that are drunk are mean and, and, and evil, but some, when they get drunk, it, it can happen where they become, where they just want to fight. And so what David did here was he was forced with a decision either turn the other cheek or defend what God has given him. And he chose to send out his army and defend the people. They had this really creative military strategy where they're always going to be helping each other and moving. But David chose to fight back, which totally goes against the concept of turn the other cheek, except when you actually think about it in context. I think turn the other cheek is talking about when someone hits you or attacks you, then you turn the other cheek. For example, if I'm out walking around, there's a lot of wisdom in turning the other cheek, especially when I've gone to third world countries. When I, as someone, as an American, go into a different culture, if I get in a fight, all the locals, what are they going to see? This Americans fighting are one of us. And the, those cultural lines are very real. But if they hit me and I turn the other cheek, what does that do? That shows I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of them, but I'm also not going to engage in a fight. It actually keeps me safe. And even if it doesn't, it can help promote the gospel. But the Bible says that he who doesn't care for his own family is worse than an unbeliever. So when the fight comes to your front door, Jesus even just encourages his disciples to buy a sword. And I think it's for that reason. It's to protect people that aren't able to protect themselves. And as someone that is, is, is a young man, I have been given the privilege of health. But that privilege comes with the responsibility of re- protecting people that can't protect themselves. There's a couple verses I wanted to talk about that talk about these topics. The first one is Proverbs 
25, 26. If the godly give into the wicked, it is like polluting a fountain or muddying a stream. To Psalms 60, 11. Oh, please help us against our enemies for all humans help is useless with God's help. We will do mighty things for he will trample down our foes. I think there's times when we're supposed to turn the other cheek. And there's times when we're supposed to stand up for those who can't protect themselves. I hope this encourages you and build your faith, gives you a little bit better understanding of what the Bible says about self-defense. This is a big topic that I'll probably make other videos on as we go through the Bible this year. So if you want to see those, be sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you back tomorrow as we continue to read through scripture together.